Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. I delayed the woman at the checkout because she came before closing. The second story. The big boss of the store and my first boss cheated on me twice, so I became a pain in the A to them. The third story. I put up a canopy for some shade. Two ladies sit under it, then be at me for moving the shade so I'll be under it instead. The first story is, spend $400 right at close, you can wait a while. A bit of background. I work in an East Coast supermarket chain, no not that one, as a front end cashier. Our store stops accepting new customers at 8.45 and closes at 9 o'clock. After this we have to break down the aisles and clean, so we all leave around 10. If this schedule is disturbed, we all go home much later. On to the revenge. It was a Thursday night, and our store was running at a decent pace up until about 8.30, where only a few customers remained. At 8.56, a customer walks up, C, with two carts of groceries, overflowing onto the floor as she dragged them along behind her. She's been a regular and does this same thing every time she comes in. Even the managers complain about her. We've always talked about teaching her a lesson and such, because she's just so nasty as well. She walks up to me and says, You'd better look a little more lively than that. I don't want to be here all night. She began to haphazardly toss all her groceries across the belt, in no order whatsoever. I looked over to my bagger, and she looked like someone just spoiled the mood, but I had an idea. Her groceries needed to be sorted and carefully placed in carriages to avoid anything at all from being crushed, right? Just to give an estimation, a normal transaction runs about 3 minutes. We made hers last about 15. We sorted everything into sections by item type, and then by subcategory. After each section I stopped and waited for my bagger to finish, and would carefully review the last section to check for any double scanned items or incorrect prices. After about 2 sections she began tapping her foot and sighing frequently. C. Would you just hurry up? Me. I'm just doing my best to make sure your order is correct. Retail smile. C. Let me talk to your manager, smart A. I call over the ASM and continue carefully and precisely ring the order. C. Look what he's doing. This is outrageous. I mean, it's 9 10 and I have places I need to be. Do you know who I am? Etc. Etc. ASM. He's just doing his job, and very well, I might add. You should come in earlier next time. Have a good evening, ma'am. C. Sounds you would expect from a rabbit dog. I can see she's paying with a check, so while she's chewing out the poor ASM, I quickly remove the strip of ink from the printer and finish your order. Me. Okay, the total comes to 40767. How would you like to pay? C. Check, and you're lucky I'm paying it all. Me. I'm so sorry you feel that way. I take her check and place it in the printer. Oh no, it doesn't work. Me. Looks like we're gonna have to take you to another register, ma'am. Our check printer is acting. C. I'll just pay cash. Me. Okay, so sorry. Retail smile. I slowly counter change. Might have lost count a couple times, and wish her a night as wonderful as she is. We all stayed late that night, but no one complained even once. I'm surprised how you stayed calm in that situation. If she had been so rude to me, I don't think I would have been able to stay so calm and collected. I've heard a lot of stories about customers like that coming in before closing time. There was a woman who came into the store all the time before closing time. She always asked to have her things packed. One day it was 10 minutes before closing time, and she enters the line with a huge cart of stuff. The cashier took his time, and as he began to pack her things, he began to put only one thing in each double pack and weigh it with his little finger. Did she buy a candy bar? It has its own bag. Even the little bag of chips got its own bag. The whole process took half an hour, and by the end she was so mad. She even put the groceries in the car herself. After that night she never went to that store again, and none of the employees saw her in line. The next story is... Got demoted twice, so I became a pain in the A for my store. So I work at a retailer that's well known in this region, Upper Midwest, and was hired on in a manager, low level slash entry level management, and I'm working there in this position. Through the fun, sarcasm, that is holiday season, and a few months into the new year, my boss at the time was known for having a bad temper, and you don't want to be near him when he's having a mood, and he clearly had favorites as well. One day I get pulled into the office and told I was being moved to a different department, not even as a manager either, but a normal employee based on a BS concern for stress. I listen to Chill Step, melodic after work, and let any work-related stuff wash off after I'm done, and don't let it bother me. 
I worked in this position for around 8 to 9 months. During that time, my first boss was moved into a position that put him over my manager, and thus put him over me. And it didn't take long, about 2 months, before I once again was pulled into the office and told I was being moved to a different department this time. Then the revenge, as I had it with this company, and the leadership of my store. I did something that me from a few years ago would have never believed I'd do. I found some like-minded co-workers and began a union organizing committee. After two months we began to make ourselves known, and while a lot of the others were subtle, I was open to my co-workers of what I was doing. This is where federal violation 1 happens as management called my flyers in the break room as solicitation, and was removing them. I went to the NLRB and filed a charge against my employer. After a while the charges were found to have merit, and the store had to settle with the NLRB. After a while I started subtly recording conversations with managers, eventually getting to the point that it was well known that I record. This is legal under the law as my state is one party consent. To this date I have around 120-ish recordings of things that possibly show violations of the law by the store. One other thing I noticed was that one of the fire exits would be frequently blocked by stuff, and I began making a habit of calling the local fire marshal as a concerned citizen about the blocked fire exit. The second violation came when we were in the department, and the topic of wages came up. I freely and openly stated my wage only to be stopped and scorned by a supervisor. Note, in the US you're legally allowed to discuss wages. Once again this was brought to the NLRB and found to have merit. One way I've made myself, or tried, to be a headache has been when any corporate folks come. I introduce myself as the union organizer to make sure they know there is an active union effort here. If the store's big boss and my first boss didn't screw me over twice, I wouldn't have gone to do all this. Moral of the story, don't peeve off one employee to the point they go and start a union and become a pain in your butt. Edit, accomplishments since starting the effort. Management is giving reviews on a regular basis, before some employees went years with no performance reviews. Full time and part time have had minimum wage increase. Employees are treated generally better, as I've educated them on laws, putting management on notice that we know our rights. Improvements to food and employees safety are being made. I speak with management once every one to two weeks, bringing concerns forward. Haha, <laughs> you sure have become a pain in the A for them. You can also call OSHA about fire exits or blocked rooms. You can call the health inspector for nutritional issues. The fire exit's very important. I've seen fire departments shut down buildings full of employees and customers until they were fixed. And they have written huge fines. And often a call to the local media helps. Depending on what laws are being broken, you may have the option of filing a complaint with a government agency, which will then take over some of the lawsuits on your behalf. For example, the Attorney General's office has a procedure for this. You file a complaint with them and they handle the rest, so you can keep putting sticks in their wheels. Take a video or photo, it'll be proof of many violations, and that's assuming they can identify exactly what's going on in the video, who's speaking, what their position is, etc. They can't just take your word for it, but be careful that it doesn't hurt you. The last story is, Ladies get mad at me for moving my canopy, so I'll be in the shade. I pretend I can't understand them. A few years ago when my wife and I were still dating, we went to one of my son's little league baseball games. We knew in advance which baseball field it would be played in, so we already knew they had no seating for spectators and no shade either. I brought lawn chairs and an easy up, a canvas canopy with four legs. When the game was about to start, we picked out a spot down the first baseline where we could set up our chairs in the easy up. Several parents were already there to watch their own kids play. Like us, most of them brought their own chairs. I figured I'd start with the easy up, then I'd go back to the car to get the chairs. Among the parents who were watching the game, there were two ladies, who I assume were Vietnamese, that were paying particular attention to me as I put up the easy up. They were about 20 feet away from where I was putting the canopy up, but they kept turning around and looking at me, talking about what I was doing and pointing at me. I got the impression that they had a problem with what I was doing, but I'd seen people with canopies at the games before, and I'd set up behind everyone, so I didn't see what the problem was. When I'd finished putting up the canopy I asked my wife, girlfriend at the time, to stay with the canopy while I went back to the car to get the chairs. The car wasn't parked very far away. When I got the chairs from the car and headed back to the canopy, the two ladies had gotten up and were moving their chairs to be under the shade of my canopy. This was in the afternoon, so the shade provided by the canopy was already several feet away from being directly under the canopy. Instead of being under the canopy, the shade was a few feet to the right of the canopy, leaving the underneath side of the canopy directly in the sun. These ladies set their chairs down right in the middle of the shade of my canopy and were sitting there talking to each other in what I could only guess was Vietnamese. 
It might have been Ty or Laotian or something else, but whatever it was, they were talking to one another and seemed to be very happy with themselves, for beating me to the shade provided by my own canopy. I unfolded the chairs beneath the canopy and asked my wife, how's that? My wife sat down in the chair and said, good, but we're still in the sun. No problem, I said. There was no one to the left of us, so I picked up the canopy by one of the legs and dragged it across the ground to the left until the shade was covering our chairs. As I did this, the two Asian ladies looked up and around, like they're trying to figure out why their shade was disappearing. As if it wasn't completely obvious that I was moving my own canopy so I could sit under the shade I had intended to provide for myself and my wife. I'd already been married for nine years to a really SH person, so I had a lot of practice in dealing with selfish people who thought only of themselves. I wasn't about to sit there and just suffer in the sun, when I'd been the one to bring the canopy for myself and my wife. These ladies were mad though. I don't know what they were thinking, but they had the impression that they were entitled to the shade for my canopy because they had sat down there first. You put that back, one of them said. She had a really thick accent. You can't move that. I what now? I asked. I couldn't believe it. You took the shade. We were sitting here and you took it, the other one said. I was in disbelief that the two women would both come to the same conclusion. I wondered if it was some kind of cultural thing. Like maybe where they were from it was bad manners to provide something and then take it away. Or maybe if they had gotten there first they thought they were entitled to it. I didn't know and didn't care. Those two then turned to each other and were squawking back and forth in whatever language they both spoke. Then turned back to me. You put it back, one of them said. I what? I asked. This is mine. I brought it. No, no, the other one said. Then said something I didn't understand. You put it back, the first one said again. The second one said something else I couldn't understand. Yeah, I said, I'm here to watch the game in the shade. I don't know what you're saying. The first one said something else again in English. Rather than argue, I just pretended I couldn't understand either of them no matter what they said. Every time they said something, I just answered with, okay, thank you. This just made them more mad. I got them to speak louder and slower and to use different words, but I would keep answering like I had no idea what they were saying. At one point, one of them was saying, we sit here, you move shade, you sit there, you move back. I shrugged my shoulders and said, I don't know what you mean. I'm sitting here. This is my chair. I brought it. Those two ladies sat there and squawked back and forth, kept pointing at me, pointing at the canopy, and pointing at the shade the whole game. As the game wore on, the shade kept moving away from my wife and me due to the angle of the sun, and kept moving towards these two ladies. I'd wait until the shade was just about to touch them, before I'd get up and move the canopy again. My ability to care about what happened to those women was limited to their interaction with me. If those ladies had looked around and pointed and said something like, I should have thought of that, rather than just try to deprive me of the use of my own canopy, I'm sure I would have been a lot more agreeable to sharing. It seems to me that these women should have removed the shade themselves and brought, for example, an umbrella from the sun. And you brought a canopy for yourself, so they have no right to make claims against you. I like that OP pretended he couldn't understand them instead of engaging in their silly argument. I think that was the best way to get rid of these annoying women. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.